so thankful for our time together. Um, We're so thankful for a chance to learn about you in a school. Um, What a blessing. Lord, I just ask that uh, my uh, life be an altar for you, Lord, that you can use my testimony to plant seeds in the hearts and the minds of these students um, and that they would go on and bear fruit that uh, glorifies you. So we thank you. We praise you in your name. Amen. All right, so our theme is I am known. And then our key verse is, you have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. And so our objective is to be known and to know others through the power of storytelling. So my main idea for this message is God loves you when you're shiny and when you're not. So, right, uh, to be known in fullness means that sometimes it's not all beautiful and dignified. So. Um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to share my own story. And as any good story starts, once upon a time, right? So once upon a time, there was uh, a young woman named Elise. So this is me, (laughs) she and I, there I am. Um, (laughs) and in uh, true old school fashion, I had to take a picture of a picture because we didn't have like the digital (laughs) pictures there. (laughs) So this is as good as it gets. Uh, I was a cheerleader. I, uh, my sister was a cheerleader. I grew up um, in competition, and so I loved cheerleading then. I cheered in junior high and high school, um, and I love cheerleading now. It's like an amazing sport. I've injured so many parts of myself in the name of cheerleading, and so for my fellow cheerleaders out there, like, you feel my pain, right, literally. <laughs> so, um, and then, oh, man, it went too far. I'm going to go back. Pretend you didn't see that. All right, there it goes. So um, can somebody in the audience describe what you're seeing in the picture? Because we have this amazing podcast network. These get posted. And so when we put images on the screen, it um, doesn't always like translate on the podcast. So can you tell me what you see? Oh, you can take the mic. Yeah. I see a tree in like an explosion, like a bomb. Wow. Okay. So the top is a tree and then the bottom's an explosion. All right. And then eighth graders, I'm going to need your help. We learned about um, this literary device in English class. So let's see. I don't see this going on. Can you help? Thanks, Mr. Ortega. Yeah. I'll check. Now it works. Uh, All right. And so eighth graders, what literary device is being employed? In ju- this image? Juxtaposition. Yeah, juxtaposition. I love it. And then um, for those of you who don't know, um, juxtaposition is a literary device where you put two images, words, ideas, phrases side by side for the purpose of contrast, right? So we can put two literal images, tree, atomic bomb, or nuclear explosion, and we can pull figurative meaning from it. And so um, eighth graders or seventh graders, now that you know what juxtaposition is, what meaning can we pull by having like a tree and an atomic bomb? Anyone want to share? Yeah. Uh, Maybe the tree being life and the bomb being death. Yeah, right. So maybe the tree is life, the bomb is death. Um, Yeah, Lucas, I'm going to walk over to you. So Maybe peace and war. Yeah, peace and war. Any other ideas, Dylan? So, can you pass this tank? Thank you. Everything good can have something bad in it. Ooh, I like that, right? Awesome. Any other thoughts, ideas? Yes, Sloan, can you pass this down to Sloan, please? Thank you. Um, Like, there's beauty and tragedy. Ooh, I love that. Beauty and tragedy. And so when we talked about juxtaposition, in a half-choking way, I said, um, this was how I felt in junior high. And so um, little did you know that this was true, right? This is exactly how I felt when I was your age. Oh, okay, too fast. Okay, so my experience in junior high, um, I was a wonderful student. Um, I was a cheer captain, so I wasn't just a cheerleader. I was the cheerleader. Um, I was in the gifted and talented program, which um, for those of you who don't know, you have to be tested to get into your hand selected. It is academically rigorous. It is the gateway to the IB program in high school. Um, I had on the outside all the goodness of that tree, um, but on the inside, it felt like an explosion had gone off. It felt like there was chaos. And um, the reason why is because I had a lot of questions um, about faith 
and Christianity, right? Like I was involved in my youth group. Um, I went to church every Sunday with my family. Uh, but I went to a church that was like what I like to say is a Bible says so church where questions are frowned upon. Um, in fact, to have a question is indicative of lacking faith. And I had so many questions about the historical accuracy of the Bible, um, how does science um, support the Bible or not support it. Um, and because my questions were shut down, both at the church that I attended and then also in my home, which um, my parents are phenomenal, but they really are like the, you know, blind faith and obedience, which is wonderful, but um, it was hard for me. So I kind of shoved everything down on the outside. It looked like that beautiful green tree, um, but on the inside, there was chaos. So I continued that way, right? Smile on the outside, inside chaos, all the way through high school. So um, by the time I had, uh, entered into my sophomore year, I had satisfied all of my high school requirements. And so I was chosen to be part of the high school university program where I took college courses um, as a high schooler which was really cool. Um, one of the first classes I took was philosophy. And I had um, a professor who found out I was a Christian and just drilled into me about my faith. He struggled to understand the, um, the omnipotence of God and the goodness of God in a world that's pretty evil. And because I had never gotten the answers to the questions I had, I lacked the foundation to um, protect and defend my faith. Right? So as a result... I stopped believing in God and Christianity. And so I made a decision. I'm like, you know what? I don't believe in God anymore. I don't believe in Christianity. Um, I didn't have that foundation. So what did I do? Well, um, as any worldly individual does, I continued on. Um, I dedicated my life to traveling the world. So I have backpacked many places all around the world. I got a uh, graduate or bachelor's degree and then eventually moved into graduate school. Um, and from the outside, I had a good life, right? One day I was camping in the desert, which I love the desert, and I saw a tumbleweed go across the desert landscape. And um, in that moment, I felt like a pressing on my spirit, if that's the only way I could describe it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a tumbleweed is um, a pretty amazing plant. It removes itself from the ground and then um, blows, like moves around through the wind. And every time it bounces, it drops seeds. And what do those seeds turn into? Yeah, more tumbleweeds, right? So um, tumbleweeds are pretty cool because there's just, there's tumbleweeds everywhere. And when I saw this tumbleweed and I felt the pressing on my heart, I recalled a Bible verse. What good is a tree that bears no fruit? Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And I realized that um, this tumbleweed had more of an impact in the world than I did. So I was living a selfish existence um, and was not bearing fruit, biblically speaking. So I found myself at a crossroads. I'm like, what do I do? Do I continue on that path of selfish existence or do I make a change? All right. So can I get a volunteer to, for our listeners at home to summarize what we kind of saw on the video? All right, Pierce. So like um, a shepherd uh, got some people to try and call the uh, sheep for him, but they didn't like as a like a little test thingy and they didn't come to their voice but when he called them they came to his yes that's exactly what happened so i love this video i think it's phenomenal that in um the real world right like we there's a lot of um, biblical allusions to sheep um and that sheep truly do know the shepherd's voice and they run to him when they're called. And so when I found myself at that crossroads, um, I knew it was the Spirit of God calling me back home. So one of the things that is confusing for a lot of people is how do I know God's voice, right? Like, how did I know in that moment that God was calling me home? So um, Dana Dill, who spoke a few weeks ago, maybe like a month or two ago, it talked about praying often. And so um, for the mentor group today, I have a handout for y'all that has like an acronym that I use for praying. Um, and that helps me kind of stay on task where like we 
we pray for God, um, we repent, we repent, um, and so on and so forth. And so I always tell students and myself, like, it's really important to spend that time with God in the morning praying. We even talked about it today as a staff, right? The importance of spending quiet time with God. Um, that makes a huge impact in your life. Um, and it's just like talking to any friend. Um, if you are sitting around, right, and just somebody next to you, just talk to them often. Um, I know my pastor has always said that uh, the true, like, um, you know somebody as a friend if you can talk to them easily. And so um, I would encourage you to do that with God. Another way is just spending time. You can read the Bible. Um, every single one of you received a Bible here at the school. It's also on your phone. Um, there's tons of Bible studies. For those of you who are super busy, like I'm super busy, I love this app called First Five, and it takes five minutes to do a Bible study, and they have a ton of topics. Sitting quietly, which I shared with the staff today, is the hardest thing for me. Um, I am one of those people that rushes through life. I don't. Does anyone feel super busy? Yeah, as a, two hands for me. I'm like, I am always busy. I'm always running around. I have two small children. Um, I'm a teacher, not just any teacher, an English teacher. So there is always stuff to like read and grade. And so um, sometimes I find myself just rushing through life and forgetting to spend that quiet time with God. And then listening to worship music is a great way to um, spend time with God and to learn how to hear his voice. I wouldn't want to challenge anyone. I've done this in my life where for 30 days, I don't listen to any secular music, which means like worldly music. I only listen to worship music and to see if that impacts your mood and your attitude and your feeling toward God. Um, I know that, you know, so, well, actually these days there's like great dance music that's also Christian <laughs> That's uh, Christian worship music. But um, so we have a lot of options for Christian worship music. All right. And the story isn't over yet. So um, my story didn't end there at that crossroad. Um, one of the things that I learned is to uh, say yes to God, which is really hard. Um, I started to say yes to those fruit bearing opportunities. And um, one of the questions Mr. Kloster had asked me when I was hired here in the interview process is, um, how did you become a teacher, right? And my answer was, I never wanted to be a teacher. So I had no intention of becoming a teacher. At the time when I had finished my um, first master's degree, I had started an MBA in Seattle. And then I was also going to move to China, like randomly. <laughs> um, and so I had plans, right? I had different plans for my life than God did. And I uh, started to volunteer in the children's ministry at my church, which I loved. Because If anyone wants something fun to do on a weekend, volunteer in the kids' ministry because you sing songs, you like help them memorize verses, you just do dance movements. I mean, it was a blast. And my pastor approached me and he said, hey, Elise, I know you are finishing up your master's in English. We really need somebody to write like a Bible curriculum for junior high because they did not have a junior high ministry. I was like, oh, who wants to be around middle schoolers? Like, I didn't like being in middle school when I was one. Um, and so it was funny, right? Because God, you know, shows up in hilarious ways. Literally, right after that, two families came up to me specifically out of all of the volunteers and said, do you have a junior high ministry here? And so I was like, all right, God. <laughs> So I reluctantly said yes. I was like, okay, this must be God prompting me to work with middle schoolers. Um, and so me and another person worked together. Um, we created a curriculum. We set up a, um, a place for middle schoolers to meet on Sunday. We set up a time for them to meet in the middle of the week for a youth group. Uh, and I found out that it was the best thing ever. I had a blast. Um, we learned so much together. Um, many of those kids in that first group still um, were still like friends and, and are still connected through social media, which is really cool. And because I said uh, reluctant yes to that moment, it led to so many other moments in my life that brought me here today. Um, from saying yes to the junior high ministry, there was a person who was attending the church and they had a small Christian school and they had kind of like added a grade every year because no one wanted to put their kids out into the public school. And so they were in elementary school and then they added a sixth grade because the parents didn't want to leave. And they added a seventh grade because they didn't want to leave. And then they needed to add an eighth grade class. And so that person had said, hey, 
I know you're finishing up with grad school. Would you be interested in teaching eighth grade? And I was like, sure, why not? I loved working with the junior high um, ministry. And so um, I substituted for a little bit at the Christian school um, and had the most amazing year. Um, It's really funny. One of the students actually does like a podcast um, and we're still trying to figure out a day to get like the original eighth grade class. It was a small class of 14 students all together. And so from there, um, because I had said yes to that moment, I stayed in California. I met my husband online, um, which, as I mentioned before, I was trying to move out of the country. And so I met my husband. um, And then not long after we got married, uh, we moved to Texas. And the first job offer I got was working with junior high at-risk youth. And so I've mentioned last year in my sermon about working with at-risk youth um, and the challenge and the blessing that brought. And so that also led to me saying yes to moving um, out of the public school, but into Christian um, Christian school. So I taught at a Christian school in Texas and then saying yes to moving back to California, where I eventually said yes to being here at CBCS. At each step of the way, I prayed fervently for God's wisdom and guidance, and he's blessed my path because I said yes. Besides saying yes to God, um, I want to leave you with one more piece of advice. God is not afraid of your scariest questions. So some of you have questions in your heart um, that are blockades to your faith, like my own, right, Um, when I was your age. So Ms. Ortega had shared that we're better together. Mrs. Spencer and Mr. Bonson talked about the um, power of a growth mindset, and Ms. Campion had shared the power of yet. And all of these topics help us to become closer to God. So my encouragement to you is to not keep those questions inside of you. Um, One of my mentors for for many years, she was a phenomenal human being. And she used to tell me that what is kept in the dark, the enemy or Satan can use. But when we bring it to light, God can use it. And so those questions that you have stirring in your heart that prevent you from saying yes to God um, should be brought to light. We have phenomenal Bible teachers here, and so I'm going to challenge our like Bible teachers to answer those questions for you. Um, what a beautiful place to get those questions answered. And if you're still too nervous to ask them in class, I would encourage you to spend time in your Bible, right? Like write those questions down, pray fervently over them, like God will answer you because a shepherd never abandons his sheep. Um, just like I tell my son, uh, if I, if you were lost— I would never stop looking for you. Um, More importantly, I tell my son every day that my love is unconditional. And so um, I tell him, I love you when you make good choices. And I love you when you make bad choices. I love you when you're happy. And I love you when you're sad. Um, I love you if you're a sparkly penny or a dingy one. Um, I love him no matter what. And God is a much better parent than I am. So If I could have that kind of love for my own son and your parents for you, then how much more can God love you no matter what? So God is more powerful than your scariest question. Once again, God loves you when you're shiny. And he loves you when you're not. You are truly known by God. And with that comes all of the good and all of the not so good. So we're going to go ahead and bow our heads in prayer, and then you can meet with your mentor groups. All right, Lord, um, we are so thankful for you. We are thankful for your unconditional love. Um, We are thankful for your endless pursuit of our heart and our mind. Lord, I just ask that you um, give a miraculous peace to the hearts that might be restless today, Lord. I ask that you instill them with courage, the courage to ask those questions that they um, might be afraid to ask, Lord. Um, We are so thankful for you, Lord, and we just ask that you bless our day, um, help to encounter you in our mentor group um, today and then this week and this year. In your name we praise you. Amen. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. 
doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.